Does your camera fit on that mount? Yeah, it does. It's damp. How do you adjust this darn thing? I don't know. Get, just, get that, just pull that lever. That one? Like I showed you. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah, okay. All right, All right let's get this stuff out of here, man. Yeah. we got to start this thing. This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and I have a very special guest today for the first of what I hope will be a very enjoyable series. With me today is Bosnian Bill of the infamous Lock Lab. How are you doing today, Bill? I am doing great, especially after the pre-intro activities. The pre, yeah, I'm feeling the, good. Yeah, I'm feeling too. very, very good. I am very relaxed. I don't what? know what this video is going to look like, but... <laughs> Everything's moving right now, I can tell you that. <laughs> Wait, they're not supposed to be? <laughs> uh so what are we talking about today? Why don't you lead us into this? Well, I think you can see right here we have a big mess of stuff, and I think you guys can pretty easily see that we're going to be talking about disc detainer picks today, but maybe not quite in the way you think. Harry, I think you probably did one or two videos on these nasty little things a, a year or yeah, so ago. Yeah, these Chinese picks, they're by far the most common. Unfortunately, they really don't work in all but a couple hand, you know, a couple of locks. And uh, you know, we both have videos on on our own little ways of modifying these to get yeah. them There's, a little bit more useful. There, there are there are a lot of little tweaks you can do. I mean, both of us have done this fork thing. Both of us have struggled to make these tips fit into some of the newer technology keyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lock mm -hmm. makers are definitely responding to the threat. And one of the threat uh, things that they've changed is, of course, the the length of what what do you want to call that thing right there? The depth of the tensioning the nose. Depth of, let's call it a, a nose. A nose. Let's call yeah. it the, the I like tension, it. tensioning it works. nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, some of them have learned that in order to defeat this type of pick, all they've got to do is set their locks a little bit deeper inside of the lock. Sure. And that right away makes these things obsolete. No, I've I've definitely encountered that, and I've tried to to make improvised tips that were a little bit deeper. But frankly, I'm not very yeah, not very good at it. I'm with you. I went <laughs> on my lathe. This one's a little bit overkill, but I mm -hmm. did the same kind of thing, trying to find a way to squeeze a little bit further down there. But you know, when you do that, you, your pick is off center, for example, sure. and when it's off center, you find yourself picking two or three discs at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, other thing I found is that when you make your prongs, when you modify these things to extend the prongs, uh, they get weak and they break very easily. That's, they do. That's about version 12 right there. And it just, I've given up. The reason honestly. I don't use this one anymore is because those prongs bend too much. This is made out of 304 stainless and it's just not strong enough. Yeah, so, you know, there are uh, custom pick makers out there that make picks for specific locks. Sure, this is one of them. This is one that I have was made by by Jaco in in Sweden. I'm sorry, in Finland. Finland, yeah. Jaco Fagerland. Uh, He's famous for, I, my very first one was from Jaco. It looked nothing like that though. Sure. But it was a precision pick. It was very nice and designed specifically for the Abus Granite series, the early version. Yeah. And it was a fantastic pick. Unfortunately, I. I loaned that to somebody, and I can't remember who I loaned it to. I never got it back. Ah, uh, it happens. So, so, you know, we've got to do something to overcome these shortcomings and, and the loss of picks, I guess. So um, what I thought we would do is talk about designing a new one, and then in this series of videos, maybe we'd actually try to build one uh, under for our, you know, that meets our own specs, things that we would like to see. So what kind of things would you like to see in, well, a, in a homemade pick? Well, there's a few things that strike me right off the bat. The first, of course, is is putting a little bo little bit more length on that tensioning nose, mm -hmm. and yeah, there's there's some elements from almost everything you see here that we can incorporate. Right here, we have some depth markings. That Graduations, would, that yeah, that would be very you know, helpful. The the first pick, the Jaco pick that I had, had those. I really liked them. Mm -hmm. Now so, they're they're very good. So we could measure uh, a couple of locks to get the. Mm -hmm. The average distance between uh, the discs, okay? Tips would be another another nice way. The, the actual picking tip itself, um, you can see this one from, from Yako has a very, very thin tip on it. And that's for sliding in between the discs. As opposed to one of these, something like that. Really sure. fat 
tips or, or, or these. Yeah, or where those guys. Yeah, you're always right. going to be hitting two or three discs at a time. So it becomes a function of luck. Now you can modify these tips, but these are only low quality silver soldered. And what I found, the reason we see so many in this pile, I've got 10 or 12 more at home. I buy them in bulk. <laughs> and the weak point to me, at least, are those tips. Because when I start filing them, they generally will fall apart. Mm -hmm. the, the silver will fail. Yep. I've had that exact issue. This is the one I've had that's lasted the longest. And, and I had to braise this one on. I put a really high temperature silver solder on there. And I probably spent over an hour trying to get that to take correctly. Okay, so improved tips, definitely that's at the top of our list. Absolutely. What else would you like to see? Well, I'd also like the thing to not be so darn ugly. <laughs> they are ugly, aren't they? <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not you know, generally bothered by aesthetics, but this bothers me. I mean, this really, when you, when you look at these, they look so slapped together out of leftover parts. A couple of screws sticking out mm -hmm. there for 10, look. That looks so chintzy. It's exactly. I mean, it uh, looks like they custom made one or two parts and then, and then took a bunch of stuff out of the parts bin, no matter what it looked like, and slapped it together. And yeah. they're selling thousands of them because that's all there is. Yeah. Now, I do like the knurling, so we need to uh, make sure we've got knurling on anything we design on to Sure, get the that is very helpful. Because a lot of times you really put a lot of torque on there. I agree. Uh, but I think the most important thing would be um, this tip here, the thing that we decided we're going to call the nose. Sure. Um, all of these are the same. I mean, what, we, we've modified them, but there's only so much that you can take off of here before this piece fails. It's hollow back yep. at that point. So if you file further than that, these fall apart. We need to find some way to get us a longer nose. So let's let's. And also, that. also perhaps even a replaceable nose. Replaceable would be fantastic. Because some of these locks take... Short they require tip. really long, and, and, uh, and shorter some, tips are easier to use, they I are. think. And they help keep it aligned. But mm -hmm. on those deeper set locks, you really need a longer nose so that you, when you tension it, you're not tensioning too far away from the body. You want to be tensioned as close to the body as you can to keep it perfectly centered. Absolutely. Otherwise, it gets all canted. So a long nose, we want it changeable back to a short nose. If, if we come up against a Chinese yep. lock, we can easily pop in a, a short nose, and then again, we'll be very flush to the face of the lock. So those are all things. You want to, I mean, we're doing this on the fly. You want to go ahead and try to sketch one out here real quick? Let's do it. All right, Let's you get do our, don't spill the drinks and move that junk, and I'll get a piece of paper and see what we can come up with. Okay. Okay. First, right, so we have the, the main body. Let's start with the main body. So uh, let's, again, let's keep things simple. Okay, that'll be our body, and then of course there's going to be a hole down the center of it. Sure, we need a all the way to the the other side. Okay. Large hole for the for the tensioning nose on one side, and then a thin hole for the the okay. picking wire. Okay, so we, we can, our tensioning nose will be here. So put a larger nose on this side. Well, actually, you'd see that, so that'd be a solid line. Um, we'll worry about how to attach that later, but our tensioning nose is going to extend out. Now you've done a lot of experimentation. What's the ideal length on that? Do you know? Did, did you I ever... found about 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters? That's what I've, I've made my custom ones to. Okay. And, uh, and other than them being made out of weak materials, it all seemed to work out. Okay, we're going to have a hole there, obviously. Okay. And we're going to find some way to make this replaceable. So 20, and then we'll find the other lengths that we want. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll also figure out how much of a little wing to put here on the end. And we can okay. do that by, by measuring. Okay. Can, now, some of these picks just have a knurled area for manipulating the, the picking head and then and for tensioning, and then we have handles. So how do we want to handle the controls for this? Do we want well, just knurling here, or do we want handles that come well, out? Well, I'll tell you, again, t let's steal some ideas from some successful makers. Jacob mm -hmm. had, his was a weird shape. In fact, I did a prototype like this. His was made out of this shape. And it was okay to get a hold of to do the tensioning, but what I found is that uh, some locks require a lot of tension, as you know. I agree. I mean, he, yeah. Mr. Gorilla. <laughs> so uh, it would, it's a little easier to have something out. I ended up modifying my Jayco by drilling holes and threading them and putting in some knobs. So something like this, but I want it to be prettier than that. Okay. Okay. So let's put some knobs in the side. All right. So let's put. I don't know. You can keep them toward the one, bottom. One over here. One over here. And those are probably going to be 
uh, threaded and they're gonna be yeah. cut into it a little bit. And if they go all the way down to that tensioning nose, we can use them to hold the tensioning nose in place. That's a good idea. So have that go all the way into that, that hole Mm -hmm. So they actually compress them, so we can avoid having a, a set screw. Agreed. Right. Yeah. So these are going to be threaded, obviously, and I'm just going to draw them kind of hanging out here. To remind us, I'm going to put hatching because I want um, these also to be cross hatched or to be knurled. Again, it makes it a little easier. Some of these picking sessions are marathon sessions, and your hands mm -hmm. get a little sweaty, you know, or you get a little oil or something on them. I agree. I agree. All right. So let's talk about, we were talking about graduation marks like you'd find on, on this right here. So would okay. they actually go on the body or on, or where do we want to put that? Well, that is something I put some thought into. Now remember, we want to keep this wire as perfectly centered down this as we can. And if we make a large hole in here by hollowing this out, that will allow our pick tip to kind of flop around. So what I thought we would do is kind of the opposite of what they have here. Instead of having this telescope inside, I thought we would telescope on the outside by something like so put the this like a pen cap almost. Yeah, like a pen cap. I, and I don't I'm not, I'm not really getting it. No threads in there obviously and these would be much tighter, but we would have the graduations on this shaft. And again, we have to measure those out. And we could easily see by having that slide on the outside which which of the discs that were on. What do you think? I think that's a plan. So that'll keep this much more aligned by having a tight shaft down the center. And then this shaft would obviously come out here. And again, stealing an idea from Jayco, we're going to put a, a set screw to pinch that, uh, that shaft. Makes sense. If the shaft is too long, he'll simply protrude out of the back, and that will allow us to vary the length of the shaft if we want to, or for real anal, we can simply get it the right length and cut him off right there, however we want to do it. Don't you remember? We're trying to make this thing pretty. we got to cut it off. <laughs> okay, we're going to cut it off. That's right. I'm, that's None what I meant stuff. to say. I meant to say cut it off. <laughs> so we'll have to measure some locks to see what sort of spacing we want on the graduations. Yeah, well, too, let's, yeah, we'll do that. Let's start with just the body. Let's, let's build the body, and then we'll see where we're at, make any improvements, and then we'll come in and do all the rest of these. And each of these will be one of our separate uh, modules or videos. Sounds good. And okay. we'll, we'll switch back and forth between our channels. That's way Yeah, you, people, you do the first one. People who don't get exposed to your channel might, Can, is, might meet you, and, well, and people on your channel who don't know me will come over to my channel and, and watch some videos. And that's a good idea. And hopefully also, everyone will be happy. And it gives me another reason to come over here later to do another module and drink some more of your adult beverages before we start. Now that's a plan. <laughs> I'm talking bulk delivery here, mass, like barrels, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that was assumed. <laughs> All right, so let's go into uh, your lock lab, uh, mm -hmm. since you have a very nice little lathe and let's keep this simple let's make it out of brass because it's a softer metal easier to work with it's cheaper it takes less time just right. to do a prototype sounds good and then yeah. if we screw up we're not going to be out a whole bunch of tools and, and expensive stainless steel okay all let right yeah uh, let me go show you my my new lathe all right let's go all right guys i think you can see we've been down in the machine shop for about an hour and i'm gonna let the master machinist oh, boy. walk you through what's happened here it he's looks not being sarcastic at all <laughs> <laughs> go for it <laughs> okay let's look at what we got here because this is not the part that you see down here we made a couple of game time calls as we were machining this the largest one of which was we made this a lot narrower. We figured there was really no point in having a much larger tool. This will be easier to hold in the hand. It'll be easier to fit in a case. And then while we were doing that, we also trimmed those edges down just to make the whole thing just a bit sleeker. Now, as far as the machining goes, there really wasn't anything difficult about this. The, the turning operations were fairly simple. Yeah. The, uh, the drilling and tapping of the holes is, is nothing difficult. Uh, actually, this really worked out for us. At the last minute, we decided to tension because obviously the nose goes in here. Turn it sideways a little bit. And you mentioned that we're going to hold the nose in with what are going to be eventually the handles. So in one machining operation, all the way through, threaded, one, one tapping move, and, and that was completely done. 
And now that's going to tension it, I think, pretty perfectly. That was a great idea. Sure. We settled on 70 thousandths of an inch for the spacing of these little graduations here. You can see we put some color in there. It actually wasn't difficult. We just used a, a Sharpie, a black, and the last two markings are red, just to give the user an indication of when they are at the top disc. Yep. So, all in all, I think we're pretty happy with what, with what came out okay, here. Okay, we spent an hour. I want to show this thing off just a little bit more. There, a lot of effort that may not be apparent to the eye. That you, You're not going to find it in those Chinese pigs, but you'll notice that every part of this is chamfered. And again, we were there, we were working, everything was already chucked up. There's no reason not to chamfer all of the edges. And we beveled everything here. It wasn't that difficult. And the reason we did that, it didn't take that long but you're gonna be holding this thing in your hand for hours, and why leave sharp edges? Why not take a couple of extra seconds and just make everything, <laughs> dare I say, perfect? It was, it was worth the extra effort. <laughs> it really was. You know, if we're trying to make this thing pretty, let's go all the way. <laughs> all right, well, we've got, the, we've got the foundation built. So what is the next step? What do you wanna build next? I think the, uh, the cap. You wanna build that guy? This portion right here, the uh, knob that we're gonna to use to turn it. Okay, how do you? And, do you I just pulled this cap off of my pen as an example of what we might do. Something that fits over the top. Okay. We can use this to, nice to turn tight. our pension. We want to tight enough so that there's no flop, but tight enough so that it's perfectly aligned. That's a delicate balance. Yeah. I think something maybe roughly 25 thousandths all the way around extra okay. makes sense. We'll, we'll start small and then move up. Yeah, all right. Probably knurl this so we have a nice grip, grip as you were talking about. All right. And we'll put a tiny little hole in the top with set screws on both sides or to just keep, one? I will, let's put it on both sides and that way we'll keep it perfectly centered. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's going to be anything anything tricky about this. This is just no. a... That's a, Compared to this, the first, the foundation, the body, I think that'll be pretty easy to do. Let's go down, back down to the, uh, to the lab and see what we can do. Let's do it.